We use our home routers every day. And we already know at this point, they are more than just routers. There are also access points, switches, and yes, firewalls. But these generic routers expose very little options for firewalls. Mostly, we get port forwarding. Using OpenWRT gets us those firewall options we want. Now, how do we make sense of this? In this video, we're going to break it down. So stick around. Welcome back to Dev Odyssey, a developer's journey through IT, where I cover tutorials and reviews of IT tools and technologies. I'm your host, Oris, and in this episode, we're making firewall rules in OpenWRT. First, let's define a firewall rule. It's a configuration that defines how we want our router to behave when presented with layer 3 traffic given a set of criteria. In most cases, these rules are port-based rules, meaning the protocol we want to control, we assume, is tied to a port number. For example, HTTPS uses port 443. This is not always the case. It's an assumption we make, as that is the standard. New firewall technology, or next-generation firewalls, are layer 7-based firewalls and can create app-based rules that allow you to control the traffic not based on the port number, but based on the protocol. This is due to packet inspection that can tell what type of traffic the protocol is, regardless of the destination port. This is a more secure way of creating rules, but for this video, we won't be covering that. As it stands, a generic firewall lets all traffic out, no matter what. Most of the time, you don't need that as you'll only need to use a subset of the 65,535 ports available. So why not lock it down to the ones you need? Doing so, this helps prevent security holes and data leaks from your network, and potentially stop viruses and malware. Now, this isn't the end-all be-all. This is just another layer of security that encompasses the overall strategy of defense in depth. The more security layers you have, the better. Last thing, this used to be easier, as we had less network devices just a little over a decade ago. Now with everything connected and more network technologies, more ports are being used. So making secure firewall rules might break some functionality. We'll discuss how to get around this later. For hardware, I'll be using my GL iNet Slate 2 running OpenWRT 22.03. Let's jump right in and talk about OpenWRT firewalls. Firewalls in OpenWRT are based off a software package called NFTables, which is based on another software package called IPTables. They share the same core concepts, which we'll get into right now. First, let's log in and then navigate to network, then firewall. Under the general settings tab, we see firewall zone settings. Let's talk about zones. It's important we cover this now, as this will influence how we write our firewall rules. A zone is a logical area that we assign network interfaces to, and therefore, different networks. This zone concept is not shared by all firewall technology, and generally is associated with Linux firewalls. With zones, we can control the following, input, output, and forward. These are technically called chains, and there are more of them, but we won't get into that. Input controls traffic going into the zone from the outside. Output controls traffic leaving the zone from the inside. And forward controls traffic going to different networks within the zone. Each of these chains has behaviors that we can control, accept, drop, and reject. Accept means allow the traffic. Drop means ignore the traffic or don't handle it. And reject means to deny it or tell the source 
that the traffic was blocked. In general settings here, we are defining the default behavior for all zones. So even if you don't explicitly make a zone, the default behavior will be what you see here. For a base install of OpenWRT, you will see input as allow, output as allow, and forward as reject. Moving below to the zone section, we can define these same chains with default behavior for each zone. For example, the LAN zone we see input, output, and forward are all set to accept. This basically means let everything through. And because these are defined on the zone, they will supersede the general zone settings we talked about earlier. To the left under zones, we see zone forwardings. This defines what traffic is allowed to move from one zone to another. Don't get confused with the forward chain in the zone. Forward chain is for network to network traffic in the same zone. Zone forwardings is for traffic between two different zones. This is a zone forwarding we want because this is what gives our LAN access to the internet. Let's edit one of these zones to get a closer look. Click the edit button in the first cell or the LAN zone all the way to the right. Here, we have the same chain options as before that we can modify. Towards the bottom, we see covered networks. This is where we can assign interfaces of our choice to this zone. At the bottom, we have forwarding options. This lets us choose our destination zone to forward to and source zone to forward from. To finish off, if you want to log your reject and drop traffic for troubleshooting purposes, you can do that by clicking the Advanced Settings tab and checking off Enable Logging on this zone. This will let us see our rules in action. When they are hit, they should be logged. Just as a quick side note, Rules with the accept action are not logged, and that is by design. To log this traffic, you'll need something like SoftLoad package or another solution. Drop me a comment below if you want to discuss this more. Check off Enable Logging on this zone, click Save, then Save and Apply. Next, edit the WAN zone. Here, we have input as reject. This blocks any incoming internet traffic. Next, we have output as accept. This lets our traffic go out to the internet. Last, we have forward as reject. This stops any traffic from going to a different network in the WAN zone. This isn't a value you'd change often and is not something I'd concern yourself with. In this case, it means the WAN and WAN 6 network cannot reach each other. One more item I wanted to show you is masquerading. This means perform outbound NAT or replace the IP address of the outbound traffic with the WAN IP address or our public IP address. This is another feature that gives our local network and devices access to the internet. We're done here. So click Dismiss. Now that we have covered that, let's talk about why these defaults are important before looking at firewall rules. This default behavior is important because this defines how we will write our firewall rules. For example, if we wanted to write a rule to block outbound traffic on port 1234 in the LAN zone, we'll have to write a reject or drop rule. That's because by default, this traffic is allowed as per our zone policy discussion. If we wanted to write a rule to allow inbound traffic on port 1234 in the WAN zone, we'll have to write an accept rule. As you'd expect, that's because the input chain is to reject by default. With a solid understanding of zones, we can move to the firewall rules. Click the traffic rules tab toward the middle top. 
The first thing you will notice is that all of these rules are for the WAN interface. Looking at the right, you will see that they are all accept input rules. Given what we just covered, this makes sense. That's because the default action for the input chain is reject. Therefore, any rules we write for this interface should be actions that are not reject, such as accept or deny. Otherwise, writing any additional reject rules on the input chain would simply be redundant. Let's create our own example firewall rule. For this rule, we'll create a drop ping rule for the LAN zone using the input chain. As we saw earlier, the default input chain action for the LAN zone is accept. So it would only make sense to make a drop or reject rule for the input chain. To create a new rule, scroll down and click add in the bottom left hand corner. In the new pop up, we have our rule parameters to create a new rule. I'll touch on each as we go along. For the name, let's call it drop ping. For a protocol, choose ICMP. For source zone, choose LAN. For source address, leave this as empty, as this means the rule will apply to all IP addresses in the LAN zone networks. For destination zone, set to device input. Since the zone is defined by the router, any rules filtering traffic destined for the router belongs in the input chain. For destination address, leave it as empty as it's not necessary. At this point, it's implied to be the router's LAN IP address based on what we already defined. Lastly, for action, choose drop. Click save at the bottom right-hand corner of the pop-up. For the sake of example, let's create another rule that's port-based. We'll create a drop HTTP rule. Click add once more, and in the pop-up, define the following. For name, drop HTTP. For protocol, TCP. For source zone, LAN. For source address, leave it empty. For source port, also leave it empty. For destination zone, set to device input. For destination address, leave that as empty. For destination port, type in 80. For action, choose drop. Click save, then save and apply. Now that we've created these two rules, let's test them out. To watch our rules in action, let's log in over SSH in the terminal. In our SSH session, type the command log read hyphen F. This will follow the logs as they come in, keeping our log read session active until we close it. To start our test, we'll try to ping the router. In another terminal tab, type ping 192.168.1.1. As expected, we don't see any ping responses. Looking at our log read session, we can see entries for the drop ping rule recreated, along with the source, destination IP, and other traffic information. Let's try the drop HTTP rule by going to the browser and typing in the address HTTP 192.168.1.1. As we'd expect, the site shouldn't load. Looking back at the log read session, we also see entries for the drop HTTP rule we created, along with similar traffic data. These entries both confirm our rules are working as expected. And there you have it. We've covered 
and tested the basics of firewalls and rules in OpenWRT. Now that we know how to create firewall rules, what are the firewall rules we should be creating? In general, creating an allow list is best practice versus a deny list like in this example. By this, I mean create firewall rules to explicitly allow traffic rather than to deny it, as allow lists are easier to create and manage than deny lists. To implement this, we would set the default policy for each chain in the zone to drop and create firewall rules in the traffic rules tab to choose what traffic and hosts we want to communicate with. That's beyond the scope of this video, but I figured I'd at least explain this best practice. Thanks for following me in my journey. I really appreciate it. If you got some value out of this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you like this type of content and other content around IT technologies, networking, security, and more, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and click that bell for notification so you don't miss the next video. Want to see a best practices firewall and rules video? Like how I'd set up my home network? Drop me a comment below and we can discuss it. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.